Greetings faculty and welcome to another tutorial. Today's topic will be covering how to embed a photo slideshow into your Moodle course. Now my goal at, by the end of this lesson is to have embedded a slideshow in block one of my Moodle course. To begin with, I'm going to navigate to the Picasso Web Albums website. Here you have the address. If you're already logged into your Gmail account, it's going to take you right into your Picasso Web Album account. Now, for those of you who have never used this before, you'll probably see a blank, a blank screen here. But since I've uploaded some photos already, I have eight albums here that are already existing. But say I want to create a new one. I'm simply going to click on the Upload button. Now this brings me to a screen where I can actually name my album. I'm just going to be real creative here and call this slideshow. And now I'm going to select the photos that I want to include in my slideshow. So let me see what's worthy of my slideshow. Specific, okay, maybe this one. We'll see what these are. So these are screenshots from my computer. Okay, so I've now uploaded four photos to my slideshow and I'm going to click OK. Right, now there's some things you're going to want to uh, pay attention to. Um, the first thing you want to do is if you want to collaborate on an album with someone the first thing you probably want to do is share it with somebody. So if I click the share button, it's going to let me select, let me type in the email addresses of people I want to share with. So say I want to share this with someone else on campus. Let's see. If I share this with Mr. Moran, I can maybe share it with Ms. Kumar. I can give them a little message. And the key feature in this is that if I want them to be able to add their own photos, I need to select Let People I Share With Contribute Photos. But for the time being, I'm not interested in sharing this particular album, so I'm just going to discard this sharing feature. And now I'm back to my album. The other nice thing about this is that I can actually edit the visibility of this album, meaning I can control who sees the pictures in this album. And this is useful, especially if you're taking photographs of, of kids and you don't want just anybody seeing the photographs. So next to a thumbnail of the album, you can actually see this little lock. And right now, by default, the settings are private. So I'm the only one who can see this album right now. But if I click Edit, I'm going to get some options for visibility. So, here they are in terms of accessibility. On the top you have public on the web. This means that anyone in the world could happen to fall upon your photos. Now, limited anyone with, with the link means everyone has access to it, but they would have to know the link to be able to view any of the, uh, the photographs. Here, it's uh, the Washington International School. This means that anyone who is logged in to the Washington International School domain would be able to see the photograph. And a limited version of that is people at Washington International School with the link, meaning that even if you're at Washington International School, you would still need to have the link in order to be able to see it. And of course, the only you option is private for you. So go ahead and, and choose what makes sense for you. Um, I tend to like the limited anyone with the link option. This means it's pretty wide open. And the URLs tend to be very long. So the chances of someone just kind of randomly coming across it are, are, are pretty rare. So I'm going to go ahead and click limited anyone with the link. And 
I am then going to perhaps write in a description, so, some screenshots, and these are optional uh, categories. Um, they don't have to be filled in. And I'm going to click Save Changes. Great. So now that my photos are actually more visible than just to myself, I can now create the slideshow. So on the right-hand side here, you have a link to this album button. You can actually uh, click that, and it presents some more options below it. Now what we're interested in is the slideshow option. So I'm going to go click on Embed Slideshow. Now, uh, by default, it, it'll come up with, I think, either your last used settings, or I'm not sure actually how it decides what settings it's using. But notice here, the medium size slideshow is only 288 pixels wide. So depending on how big you want the pictures to show on your screen, um, you can modify that. So I tend to opt for the, uh, the 400 pixel ones because it fits nicely in the center of a Moodle block. Um, and the autoplay I tend to uh, turn off because I like my users to be able to control when it goes to the next photograph. And then again you can opt to show captions if, if the uh, slideshow has captions. Um, if, each the if, if the photographs have captions you can opt to display those. So, and as you make changes here, it changes the code here in this yellow uh, notepad sort of box. So now once you're happy with the way the slideshow looks, you can actually copy the code. Command C. And I'm done with it. And now I'm going to go back to my Moodle page. And of course, having turned editing on, I'm going to drop that code right in here into Google Chrome. Save changes. And again, I might actually have to refresh my page for the slideshow to display. And here we are. By clicking play, it gives me an interface to actually scroll through the photographs in my slideshow. That concludes this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it's a little longer than previous ones, but uh, I hope you find this uh, lesson uh, helpful and uh, look forward to seeing some of your slideshows in your Moodle pages.